click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, welcome back to the subject of Machine Design 1. We are right now learning about different aspects of reverse loading, cyclic loading and their design. In today's session, we are going to look at two important aspects called infinite life and finite life design. So students, in reality, the components or the mechanical components, they undergo two kind of loading. Of course, they come under the cyclic loading conditions, but the first kind of loading is the reverse loading or the completely reverse loading and second case is the fluctuating loading. In case of reverse loading, as we have seen in the previous sessions, that the mean stress value is always zero, whereas the maximum stress will be either tensile as well as the compressive one. In one cycle, it will be tensile and another one, it will be the compressive one. In case of fluctuating stresses, you will have the mean stress never equal to zero. Also, the maximum stress will be purely tensile or the purely compressive or they will be the combination, but not the equal halves. In such cases, the problems of fluctuating stresses, they are solved using Goodman criteria or Goodman's diagram. Whereas the cases in reverse stresses, they are solved using finite and infinite life problems. In today's session, we are going to look at how these problems are solved using finite and infinite life. Next sessions will be solving or will be dealing with the numericals based on them. And then we'll look how the Goodman criteria or Goodman diagram is used to solve problems of fluctuating stresses. So let us move ahead with the reverse stresses. In case of reverse stresses, now there are two criteria we can use. The first one is infinite life criteria and the second one is the finite life criteria. In case of infinite life criteria, the endurance limit becomes the criteria of failure. So in that case, we will have to design everything that comes under or that falls below the endurance limit as far as the infinite life is concerned. But when the finite life is to be concerned, the SN curve is used for the design purpose. In the next slide, we will see how they are used and how the actual practice is used. Let us start with the infinite life. Like we discussed for infinite life, endurance limit is the failure criteria so the amplitude stress that we are going to use or the maximum stress that we are going to use should be smaller than the endurance limit that is the very basic and simple criteria and that is how it should be related so that the object or the component will withstand the infinite number of cycles or we will say that the product has withstand the infinite number of cycles in that case there are two relations two important relations they have used amplitude stresses may be in case of the bending or maybe in case of the torsion are given by the endurance limit divided by factor of safety in each of them we can use any of the notations it can be se or sigma c both of sigma e both of them do represent the stresses but the only thing is e represents the endurance limit now this is the corrected value like we have seen in previous session there are theoretical values and there are the actual values actual values are the corrected values after considering certain factors so these are the two important relations that we have to use wherever we have to define the infinite life but when it comes to the finite life the procedure is little lengthy and it uses the graph such a graph which is called sn curve we have to plot for each material given for example this curve is valid for the stress materials steel materials in that case this curve will be used to find out the fatigue strength at any point of time let's try to understand how it is done on this particular axis we plot of course this is a log log paper so in that case on this log log paper both the things will be converted into logs this is the stresses number of stresses and these are the endurance limit so in that case at point 9 endurance limit we start with point a and we aimed it at endurance limit of SE. We connect these two points. So that gives me the starting point and the ending point. Now it has to be mentioned that the starting point lies at 10 rich to 3 cycles and the end point lies only 10 rich to 6 cycles. Now in between them, no matter which point we are going to consider, no matter how much cycles we are going to consider, we have to plot a line vertically upward 
it cuts this particular line at certain point through which we need to draw a horizontal line. The line cutting on this particular y axis gives us the value of the endurance limit for that particular number of cycles. So this is how we are going to solve the numerical based on the design for finite and infinite life. Student, let me mention that these designs are useful when we know that or we know in advance the life expected from a product which may undergo the reverse loading. So these two criteria of finite and infinite loading will be taken care by only the reverse loading cases. In the next session we will demonstrate how to find out these uh, cases and how to solve the numericals. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to Ikeda. Thank you.